The Champions League is set to resume this week as we enter the quarter-final stages of this season's competition. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video is going to centre around the Champions League, which is set to return and resume once again this week. We're into the quarter-final stages of the competition. We are down to the final eight teams going into it, and we've got some extremely mouth-watering and exciting encounters for us to sink our teeth into and to feast our eyes upon this week as the likes of Arsenal are taking on Bayern Munich, Manchester City battle Real Madrid, Barcelona take on PSG and of course Atletico Madrid uh, are playing Borussia Dortmund. Lot of football to feast our eyes upon, sink our teeth into and of course this is going to be the video where we go through the games, talk about them and see who will make it through to the semi-final stages of the competition. Um, as always with these types of videos, hit, hit the like button if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always incredibly greatly appreciated. Of course, uh, hit the comment section as well. Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on the Champions League and the games itself that are going to be played out over the next couple of weeks or so of this competition. Would love to hear your thoughts, feelings on everything else on that one. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's get on with talking about the Champions League. And first and foremost, we're going to be talking about Tuesday night's games. And that first brings us to the Emirates Stadium where the first game is going to be played out between Arsenal and Bayern Munich at home for the Gunners. This has Arsenal win written all over it, I'm afraid. Um, look, Bayern Munich, of course, can spring a bit of a surprise. And, of course, the Gunners have to contend with the return of a well-familiar foe. A well-familiar enemy in the form of Harry Kane leading the line for the German champions. Or soon-to-be ex-German champions, it seems, given the fact that Bayer Leverkusen are only one win away from securing that Bundesliga title, dethroning Bayern Munich for the first time in over 10 years. This isn't a good Bayern Munich side by any stretch of the imagination. They still have their threats. They are still, of course, Bayern Munich, and they still have history in this competition. But let's face it, as far as this season goes, they are not the same Bayern Munich that have been so threatening, so frightening, and so terrifying to face at times during the history of this competition for them. Arsenal, I think they can get the job done and dusted at home. I really do, and I think they can put their demons and lay their, uh, lay their ghosts to rest, shall we say, of threats of... Bayer Leverkusen in the past turning up and absolutely wiping the floor with Arsenal 5-1, whether it be home or away for the Gunners. That happened, of course, uh, around about 10 years ago. So I think Arsenal can put them demons to bed. I think they can put. I think they can take great stride and confidence in this game. Of course, it'll be nervy territory. It's not very much territory that's familiar to Arsenal being in the last eight of this kind of competition. Uh, but I still think that with um, the way that Bayern, Bayern Munich are playing, the way that obviously uh, Thomas Tuchel sets up, I think they can have make it a really good go here. And I think that Arsenal can get the job done across both legs. Won't be easy. Won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination. But I just think Arsenal will get the job done when it matters most. And like I say... They have to contend with familiar enemies. They have to contend with individual talent at Bayern Munich. But the unity, for whatever reason, just isn't quite there with Munich. And that's where I think Arsenal can really, really hurt them. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, Thomas Tuchel said that the Bundesliga title was over for Bayern Munich. So maybe he is putting all of his eggs in the Champions League basket. Um... The, the, from what I can gather and from what I can tell, there are a few injury concerns for Bayern Munich heading into this game. Whether or not that's mind games going into the game, whether or not that is basically um, slight injuries that may be obviously Thomas Tuchel's way of resting them for this particular game. Like I say, once again, putting all their eggs in the Champions League basket because they obviously seemingly, or, or he seemingly conceded 
the Bundesliga title a couple of weeks ago. I don't know. It remains to be seen. But either way, it's going to be an incredible game. It's going to be one hell of a game to set up across both of these two legs. Um, I just think Arsenal can do it. I think Arsenal can do it. And I wouldn't be worried about you know previous history between these two sides. I wouldn't be worried about Arsenal maybe bottling it on a bigger stage. I think that with the way that Bayern Munich are playing, I think it evens the playing field out. I think if the injuries are true, then that obviously could be a big factor in itself as well. Um, and overall, I just think Arsenal are the better team, more unified, and are more on the same page. So I'm going to go with an Arsenal win. Um, maybe a win at, at the Emirates and maybe a draw at the Allianz. Maybe something along those lines across, across the two legs. But either way, Arsenal get through nonetheless moving on Tuesday's other game we'll see Real Madrid play host to Manchester City at the Bernabeu a replay of sorts of the semi-final of last season's competition in which City uh, I believe got a draw in the first leg and then absolutely wiped the floor with Real Madrid in the uh, in the second leg at the Etihad I believe look this should be going Manchester City's way. But of course you never rule Real Madrid out. That being said, City haven't been that convincing this season. Especially not defensively anyway. And I think the likes of Vinicius Jr., uh, Rodrigo, Jude Bellingham and whoever else uh, may certainly fancy their chances of maybe testing the limits to this Somewhat weakened back line of Man City given the injuries, but also somewhat not so watertight Manchester City defence of recent times. I look at, obviously, Manchester City in recent weeks and I think that the defence hasn't been that good. They've been conceding goals and stupid goals at that and they conceded a couple at the weekend to Crystal Palace. And anyone that follows English football will know that Palace... Shouldn't really be scoring two in that particular game, but they did. In saying that, City obviously have their own threats. The dazzling form of Phil Foden, for example, who was rested at the weekend during pa uh, City's 4-2 win over Palace. Kevin De Bruyne was back on all, all, four, all sorts of form uh, this past weekend. Erling Haaland got a goal that will boost his confidence. They, of course, have the likes of Bernardo Silva, Julian Alvarez. It's a star-studded team is basically what I'm getting at from Manchester City. And against Real Madrid, you want to see the best go against the best in this kind of competition. And that's exactly what we've got here. You've got the likes of Jude Bellingham. You've got the likes of, like I say, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo. You've got the likes of, you know, Tony Cruz in midfield, Camavinga, Chiumeni. There's so many. There's so many to pick from in this. Uh, and it's going to be a very fascinating battle between these two sides. A very fascinating chess match between Pep Guardiola and Carlo Ancelotti. Obviously, Ancelotti will be hoping to redeem himself from that humiliating semi-final defeat last season in which Real Madrid barely laid a glove on Man City, particularly, like I say, in that second leg. I just see this game being a win for Manchester City. Uh, overall, City are going to get through to the semi-final. They're going to take on Arsenal. Uh, 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 sorry, in the quarter-final. They're going to take on Arsenal in the semi-final. And that's just the way that I see it. That's just the way that I personally see it. I think City will get the job done over across both legs. Again, if they can play it smart, they'll, they'll get through. They'll go through to the final four. I think if they maybe get a draw... At the Bernabeu uh, tomorrow night. And then if they go into their game at the Etihad with a very good scoreline on aggregate. They can absolutely wipe the floor with with Real Madrid again. And it's going to be up to Real Madrid to see if they can counter that. Of course this is a much stronger Real Madrid side in my opinion than what was last season. Last season they looked a bit leggy. They looked a bit lethargic. They looked like they were, they were just... Not on the same page as one another. And I think that their, their domestic campaign may have had something to do with that. But this season, they have redeemed themselves. The signing of June Bell Drew Bellingham has been absolutely revolutionary for them. Uh, they seem to have got back on the same page. Their defence seems to be 
um, a bit more stronger than what it was last season. Their attack seems to be not as perfect, but but obviously uh, still fright still frightening from a Real Madrid point of view, of course. Um, and but at the same time, I just think Pep Guardiola has a knowledge, and I'm not saying Carlo Ancelotti doesn't, because of course he does. But I think he has more of a modern knowledge, and obviously the, the maybe the stronger depth, shall we say, to maybe combat this Real Madrid side. Don't think it will be as, as as smooth sailing and as straightforward as it was last season. But at the same time, I still would back Manchester City to go through here uh, and get the job done. It could be incredible, whichever way this way goes, um, considering that I would consider Arsenal strong favourites. And of course, the winner of this tie faces the winner of the Arsenal Bayern Munich tie in the semi-final. So, we could be in for a very, very exciting couple of games here, which I'm very much looking forward to from a neutral perspective. Moving on to Wednesday's games, and we have got Atletico Madrid taking on Borussia Dortmund at the home of Atletico Madrid for the first leg. Now, I said previously when the draw was made that I have a sneaky feeling Dortmund will get through. I still think this is a bit more 50-50. I've seen a lot of people kind of go for Atletico to win, and I can easily understand why. But I think Dortmund could spring a surprise here still. I think if Dortmund could get through the first leg with a good result, a 1-0 win obviously would be perfect. But a 0-0, a 1-1... Even in like a 2-2. A draw of any kind, I think, would be a good result to take back to Dortmund. And on a Champions League night in front of Dortmund's fans, with the expectation levels rising, because it might be in Dortmund's favour if that was to be the case, I reckon Dortmund could get the job done away from home and be an unlikely side into the final four. But when you consider that, this half of the draw is maybe the, with all things considered and with all due respect, the weaker side of the draw. When you consider that the winner of this tie will go on to face the winner of PSG Barcelona. And we both know that they have their problems as well, which we'll get onto a little later. I, any one of these four sides could really fancy themselves of getting into a Champions League final. And then in that final, in a one-off game, who knows how that will end. For me... It's a big opportunity for all four of these sides. And for me, Dortmund, I think I've just got a sneaky feeling that Dortmund will get the job done. I've just got a feeling that Dortmund will get the job done in this one. Not all, not all um, swayed by it. I'm not all kind of putting all of my eggs in that particular basket. But at the same time, I just have a sneaky feeling, you know. It's going to be a fascinating game nonetheless. The likes of, you know, Karim Adeyemi. Who, uh, I, who I quite like in particular, uh, racing through for Dortmund, um, Julian Brandt as well, um, and and to name a few other names for for Dortmund as well. It's going to be very interesting on the Dortmund side of things. It's going to be one that I think the neutrals will be looking at in particular and maybe trying to find some sort of um, gems of players because they always seem to produce them kinds of gems of players, Dortmund. So this game should be no exception and seeing them produce their, their talent and their quality on a uh, on a bigger stage will be interesting. As for Atletico Madrid, we kind of know what to expect from them. They're going to keep it compact and resolute and they're going to be a little bit pragmatic, but they're also going to spring a few surprises on the counter-attack as well. We know that obviously, we know that uh, Simeone demands a more disciplined style um, uh, style and approach. So it's going to be very interesting to see this tactical battle play out. It's going to be very interesting to see the individuals of these two teams, of course, play out as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this game as well. Um, like I say, I, I think Dortmund could spring a surprise. But in saying that, of course, Atletico probably are the favourites particularly in the first leg, and if they can get a good result in the first leg, I wouldn't put it past them to absolutely stink the place out at Dortmund to obviously grind out a a favourable result that will see them go on and win the game. Um, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this game pans out before our very eyes. I'm very much interested to see how um, these two teams 
uh, try and combat the other. So I've gone with Dortmund, but again, it may not be the most popular decision, but I just have a sneaky feeling that if Dortmund can maybe pull off an incredible result away from home, they'll get the job done at home. So, yeah, I've gone with Dortmund for that one. And then finally, we've got PSG against Barcelona. Incredible game this one has in prospect for us. It may not be the same caliber and quality of sides that these two teams have had in recent years. But at the same time, this is still a very fascinating battle to me because obviously we're going to be seeing the likes of uh, Kylian Mbappe going up against Robert Lewandowski. We're going to be seeing some very young talent on display, particularly uh, on the Barcelona side of things. They've got a couple of very exciting youngsters for us to, 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 to obviously look at and to obviously see how they perform on this kind of stage. And again, as I said, with the other two teams, they'll fancy their chances of maybe making it through to a final because this is a favourable draw that they have before them. Not just PSG, but of course the tie afterwards, whether it do be their Spanish rivals or, well, I, I shouldn't get ahead of myself, but maybe P uh, 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 Spaniard rivals of uh, Atletico Madrid or whether it be, uh, you know, the rivals... From Germany in Borussia Dortmund, there is going to be um, there is going to be a side of these four teams that basically says, you know what, we could make it through to a final here, and who honestly would blame them um, of, of thinking that? For this one, look, PSG have the Kylian Mbappe factor, and I think this one is a lot more difficult to call. They have the Kylian Mbappe factor, and he would absolutely love to leave PSG with a Champions League trophy. Of course he would. Of course he would. I'm... But then, of course, you've got the Champions League history of the likes of Robert Lewandowski. It's going to be very interesting, those two attackers playing it out and battling it out on the pitch. I would probably say that Given recent history, PSG tend to bottle it on this stage. Barcelona haven't been the same Barcelona as old, but they are still obviously worthy of being Barcelona. They're still obviously a threat. They're still obviously a challenge for anyone. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this game goes. It's one of the more difficult games to call and ones that I can't actually call because on the one side of things, you have Kylian Mbappe. On that same side, you also have Luis Enrique, who, of course, formerly managed Barcelona, if you're looking for a bit of underlying story here. And then on the other side of things, you've got Barcelona, who may be a bit more of a, a more well-rounded team, uh, when with all things considered. Um, you may be looking at um, Barcelona as maybe having a few more youngsters in their ranks. That may just tip them over the edge. They may have a bit of more of a stronger case of depth than PSG but at the same time you wouldn't back against Barcelona to bottle it now what I will say again is that I think the home and away advantage of first and second leg kind of goes into it and with the first leg being in France and the second leg being in Spain of course that could tip the scales in Barcelona's favour depending on how the first leg goes of course I'm going to say Barcelona get the job done. Again, I think it might be a bit of a nervy game. It might not be the most open game of football you might ever see. But I think that Barcelona can get the job done away from home. But whether or not that they get the job done at home is going to be another story. And I personally think that this game could go right the way right the way through to extra time and penalties in the second leg, to be perfectly honest with you. I think that that could be the the case here so with that all being said i'm going to go with it going to extra time and penalties in the second leg i think that these two teams will cancel each other out for 180 plus 30 minutes of extra time and then who knows from penalties if i had to lay my neck on the line i'd go I, i'd go um I, i'd go with barcelona I just give the edge to Barcelona, but I'm not entirely confident. If I had, if I had to put money on it, 
I go Barcelona, but I'm not entirely confident. So we'll just leave it at that for now. We've got some exciting games coming up in the Champions League that I can't wait to look to, to view. I can't wait to spectate. It's going to be very exciting, especially because more so that I'm a neutral in this competition this year. So that's going to be that's going to make it um, a little bit more interesting as well. But. There you have it for the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy in regards to the Champions League quarterfinal predictions. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, but most of all, of course, your predictions on the Champions League quarterfinal stages. Who do you see making it through to the final four? Who do you see maybe going on to win the competition? Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings down below in the comment section as it will all make for interesting and great reading. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new and want to see more content like this. Both things are always very greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I'll see you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Speak to you all again very, very soon.